What sort of temperament does a Belgian Shepherd have? Well, Jack is a Belgian Shepherd, or also known as the Granondale variety. So he has um, some specific traits for the breed, like the other Belgian Shepherds. He has some positive traits and he also has some negative traits. So let's go on with the positive traits first. Jack is highly intelligent. So, what does that mean? It means he's, he's easy to train, he picks things up quick, he doesn't need many repetitions to get something down, down pat. So, and that can lead, lead to other things such as agility sports or armed services type training and things like that. So, Jack would be capable of all that type of stuff with the correct training. Loyal. Extremely loyal and extremely devoted. Even though he's a, a bonded dog, so Jack is bonded with me. He still likes his family. And he adores my wife and he, he misses her a lot when she has to go to work. So he's quite happy to see her when she comes back. But it's mainly me he sticks with. They're also protective is another positive trait. So if we go walking around in undesirable areas, um, or I wife and I feel quite safe knowing that Jack is with us. So, and one of the funny things he does being a protective breed is he, he's constantly looking around and constantly looking backwards. So he's always very aware of what's going on around him. And because it is quite a few times, he's funny enough, he's actually tripped over because he's too busy looking around and not looking in front of him. So he's tripped a few times. He's energetic. When we wake up in the morning, he's ready to do whatever we want to do. So if we want to go walking or hiking or running or just go shopping or go to the markets or anything, anything like that. He, he's, he's ready to come with us and he's always happy to do so. Okay, go for a swim, go for a swim. Yeah, so another positive trait is he's highly trainable so this goes hand in hand with him being intelligent and also this breed is eager to please so being eager to please and being intelligent makes him easy to train new things so let's get on with some of the negative traits so it comes back to his energy level again so even though that can be a positive aspect, it can also be a negative aspect, especially if he's not trained sufficiently, so, or exercised sufficiently. So Jack needs a lot of exercise and he needs a lot of mental stimulation. And if he doesn't get it, he'll let you know. The signs he does with us, if he hasn't had, had enough exercise for the day, is he'll, he'll exercise himself all night which generally means chewing our socks, chewing our shoes, uh, making a mess downstairs, sticking his head in containers and going through them and pulling them out, you know, things like that. Or he'll go and squeak his loud squeaky toy at 2 a.m. and wake us up to let us know he wants to play. So if I exercise him enough during the day, he doesn't do that at all during the night, he sleeps. So. And I find for me it's generally two to three hours a day is enough for him. So now we're talking about the energy. One thing I see a lot of dog owners do is they don't let their dog sniff. Um, letting your dog sniff is going to tire the dog out much more than walking. I mean you really can't tire a dog walking him all the time you got to let him do things like interact with other dogs or people or let them sniff um, 
So I encourage him and let him sniff as long and as often as he likes. And I base the walks around that. They're in, independent dog, so he he can be a bit of a free a free thinker. So sometimes he wants to do his own thing, which means he wants to go a certain funny. He wants to do uh, certain things. So sometimes I want to go left, and he wants to go right, and he'll be extremely stubborn about that. And then there's his protection instincts. So. But it's also a positive aspect, but the negative part is he can be too protective. So um, I have to watch him. I have to constantly watch him when I'm outside, mainly with people who are unfamiliar with dog psychology. And um, quite often I get people coming up trying to pet him from behind when he's not watching. And that is going to uh, incite a reaction, usually a quick snap at that person. So he has scared the shit out of a few people doing that. So my solution to that is just get him more, more and more familiar with people, encourage him, people to pat him, but let him come to them and not them approach him. I was also going to get myself a leash that says do not pat, on, printed on it. Belgian Shepherds need a lot of mental stimulation so I was a bit confused about what this meant at first so for me it's um, what, well, what I've been doing with him is I play little games like hide and seek I usually do it every day just little ones to get him to try and track me and then we also do other things such as um, letting him sniff is also mentally tiring and I'll sometimes hide food and get him to find that. That's another little mental thing I do. Another trait with Belgian Shepherds is they're quite reserved with people. So they're fairly aloof. So if someone comes up to him, he's not going to react like a Labrador would, for instance. Um, he's not going to really care about any stranger that comes up to pat him. He'll tolerate them patting him, but he's not really going to be begging for it. So we've been working on that, so he actually is getting a lot better. He does go up to people some, sometimes now for a pat. So I'm thinking we can sort of train that a little bit. Yeah, so these dogs definitely need socialization and quite a bit of it. Um, to keep them um, happy and also well balanced and able to take them around in public. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe. It encourages me to make more content. Another trait of a Belgian Shepherd is I would consider them a Velcro dog. So because they bond closely with their owners, it also makes him quite susceptible to separation anxiety and he's also exhibits quite a bit of Velcro behaviour so I really can't go anywhere without him. Um, he follows me to the toilet, he follows me to the bathroom. If I go upstairs he'll follow me, if I go downstairs he'll follow me again. So he's always within eye distance of me anyway. So that's just the way it is. So if if you're a person who wants their personal space and wants to go out all the time and just spray the dog in the back, it's probably not, or if you work in an office 40 hours a week, it's probably not the best dog for you. If you don't mind your dog being with you all the time and you work at home or you're, t you're retired or something like that, you'd probably be a great dog. I know I love my dog. He's, he really is the best companion I've ever had. Come here, come here, aren't you? You're a good boy, aren't you? Huh? You're a good boy. Yeah. Tell everyone what a good companion you are. Yeah?